Well, since the first one did so well, why not give another five tips I feel would be beneficiary for the wider Helldivers 2 community? You know the deal. If you already know these tips or you have some game knowledge not mentioned in the video, leave a comment down below so that we can all learn something. Because last video, I actually did learn something new down in the comments. So it seems this is a good way to improve your skills as a Helldiver. First, 500 kgs can take out detector towers and rogue science labs. Something the game never really teaches you is that you don't always need a hell bomb to deal with a sub objective. It's often much quicker to deal with it in this way. Perfect example, instead of tripping the detector tower, dealing with a hell bomb wait time, just throw a 500 kg and right on top of it, like right next to it so that the missile collides with the, the detector tower or the infrastructure and it'll destroy it. Rogue science labs are the exact same and even precision air uh, orbital airstrikes work. I also found out today that the uh, strafing run, the one that you get five of the for the airstrike, that also destroys rogue science labs. So it, it, there's multiple ways you can go about a sub objective rather than just doing it with a hell bomb, which can take longer, which saves you time on your timer and lets you go do other things. Also, jammers on bots sometimes have a layout where a fab is built into the jammer. If that's the case and you blow up the fab, it will actually cause a chain reaction that will blow the jammer up as well. Meaning sometimes, depending if you are lucky on the layout spawn, you can actually take jammers out from a distance with a recoilless. Two, something that I see a lot of people not know about, I even get asked this in my streams, is that you can actually see sub-objectives, even POIs, from your minimap without it actually popping up on your minimap. Yes, it is very better to, much better to just like get a radar station and then just look at the whole map and just clear it out as you go. Sadly though, you're not always gonna be lucky enough to spawn next to a radar station or find a radar station on the map at all. And sometimes there's situations where you find the radar station, but that's after you've cleared the entire map. So it's not really that useful. This thing is that you, you wanna try to look at the map and see like unnatural geography. So a perfect example is the artillery, the Seaf artillery is actually two perfect circles or sometimes one perfect circle with a little dot in the middle. Uh, that will be how you know there is a uh, Seaf artillery spot on your mini map. If you see a radar tower, it's going to be like a long rectangle and that's usually when you can kind of see that, oh, there's a radar tower in that position. A lot of times you'll see like small little buildings. Those are POIs that you can head down to. Uh, sometimes on, depending on the map layout, uh, if you see like a nice perfect square, this is specifically for bots, so this objective only pops up on bots. If you see like a perfect square or a perfect square within a larger perfect square, then that means there's a SAM uh, site there. And this is just to tell you that you don't always need to rely on radar towers to make sure that you're getting most for what you need to do on a map. You can actually just see it with your own eyes. And it's gonna take time for you to get used to how the maps lay out and how they'll spawn, because not not all of it will always look the same. Like I said, there's, there's two to three different variations of uh, the artillery spawn. One with two circles, one with one circle, and then some with like a half, like it, 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 it just depends. Um, but that's really it. Just make sure that you're not so overly relying on radar towers and try to hit those objectives like I said in the last video. Three, did you know the more times you die, you are actually severely impacting your contribution to a planet's liberation? That's right. Probably seems obvious, but higher difficulty missions generate far more war impact than lower difficulties. That means more sub-objectives completed equals base value of a main objective completion. And the difficulty multiplier on your impact can be from 100% all the way up to 400%. However, if your team fails to extract, even if you 100% cleared a map, you take a 30% penalty to your impact. As well as every death you take grants you a 2% penalty stacking up to 20% on your impact modifier. What does this mean? In my opinion, find a difficulty you're comfortable with, try not to be, you know, dying too much or team killing, and clear all the objectives on the map. This will help all of us liberate a planet much easier and much quicker. As well as please make sure you are completing operations and not just doing one mission and then going on to another AO. You hurt the war effort that way. Or you do not need to engage every patrol you see. Oh my God, I, I don't know how many times I deal with this personally. On higher difficulties, bug breaches and butt, dro butt drops. Oh my God, imagine. 
but bot drops spawn a metric ton of enemies, all right? Leading to engagements that can last forever, where you have those moments on missions, I bet we can all relate, where it just seems like they're never ending spawn, and you're just stuck somewhere, unless you either run away, or you manage to somehow out them and just go all out and put all your resources into clearing out that front and just bulldozing your way through. You don't need to do that. A lot of the times, those engagements that you're dealing with that seem forever, you can completely avoid most of it because you don't aggro the patrols. There is a reason why there is a stealth mechanic that is not taught to you at all by just crouching by and not shooting patrols, or sometimes just you can just run as long as you just far enough to not alert any of them. But stop aggroing patrols and you will deal with much less bug breaches and but <laughs> I did it again, bot drops. Trust me, this cuts on deaths, cuts on wasted time, and makes the mission go by faster. On bots, this is the fifth tip, all right? On bots, the recoilless will single-handedly let you solo all those heavy clankers you can run into on the field. Yes, no, exa no exaggeration, all right? You one-shot hulks. You one-shot all tanks as long as you aim for the turret and not the frontal armor. You can even one-shot a factory strider if you shoot it in the small red eye on its head. While it's also effective on bugs, I'm not, don't get me wrong, letting you one shot all the chargers, impalers, bio titans as well. I just strongly suggest that you, if you are struggling with higher level difficulties, and maybe if you are not in the experimental phase and you're trying and you're in your like meta slave phase, put on a recoil list, all right? I'm telling you, it's going to turn the game from an action like semi sim to a point and click adventure because you're just going to be soloing every kind of heavy bug you have to deal with. So at that point, once you have the recoil list, make sure you just have like a like a barrage or something, just so you can give yourself pressure for dealing with the, the small cells of like lower end bugs and bots, all right? Because the recoil list obviously is not gonna be good for that. It's only good for like the, the upper echelon of enemies, okay? I hope you found these tips helpful. Shout out to the brilliant people over at Patreon for funding this video. And if you wish to become a patron and get access to exclusive videos or early previews to big projects coming up, go down below and hit the link. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.